Austin Dillon wrecks not one, but two leaders en route to victory on Sunday night at Richmond. Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. If you thought we weren't going to have much to talk about coming out of Richmond, you couldn't be more wrong at this point because Austin Dillon gave us enough material to talk about until next Sunday's race at Michigan. On the final lap of Sunday's NASCAR Cup Series race at Richmond, Austin Dillon moved not one, but two different leaders, actually wrecked them both, going into turn three on the final lap. Joey Logano was leading the race after a late race green-white checker, and Logano's sailing off into turn three. We're like, oh man, do we sit through three and a half hours to watch a Joey Logano win? Wrong. Austin Dillon, from about five car lengths back, dives into the corner, gets to the back of the 22 car, and absolutely ships Joey Logano, sends him out, spins out. His day was done. Coming off the corner, though, Denny Halen's about to Ron Bouchard the situation here. While those two are messing around, he's going to sneak down on the inside, pass him, win the race. No, also wrong, because Austin Dillon's crew was on the radio saying, wreck him, wreck him, wreck him. Coming down, no, 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 wreck him, come on, come on, come on, come on. And that's exactly what Austin Dillon did. He went all Carson Hosevar, hooked him in the right rear, turned him into the outside wall, and goes on to win the race. And I'll be honest, left a bad taste in my mouth. Now, I know there's going to be a lot of fans that are like, I absolutely love Austin Dillon after this. I want to buy him a beer because they don't like Denny Hamlin. They don't like Joey Logano. I get it, you guys. People don't like those guys. 100% understand having your alliances, your allegiances, and not wanting to like certain guys. But when you look at it just from a competition standpoint, is this really what we want NASCAR to be? Again, the tons of comments right now on TikTok saying, this is exactly what Dale Sr. would have done. Except it's not. Dale Sr. never wrecked two people in the final quarter of a lap even the final two corners to win a race yeah he rattled people's cages he moved terry labani not once but twice and he you know did other things but never anything as egregious as what austin Dillon did dale senior was driving that car tonight what are we even talking about do you know how ridiculous this is you know the same people that would go on and talk about how austin Dillon driving the three cars an absolute disgrace and now they're out here like my new hero what no NASCAR needs to have a bit of a driving standard. And what Austin Dillon did, in my opinion, was over the line. The Logano thing, fine. I can get behind that, right? It's a bump and run. Uh, you know, it's a too strong of a bump and run. It went wrong. He shipped Joey Logano. Okay, I can get that. What he did to Denny Hamlin, that's where it crosses the line for me. You can't have your team telling you to wreck a guy. Do you go down there and hook him in the right rear, turn him into the outside wall? That's just crossing the line, in my opinion. And people have been suspended for doing just that, wreck, hooking people in the right rear and wrecking them. That being Chase Elliott just last year in 2023, Bubba Wallace the year before that. Carson Hosevar just got in trouble for doing the same thing under caution to Harrison Burton at Nashville earlier in the year. And it should be a penalty once again, if we're being honest. I mean, every short track in the country would have handed out penalties for that, especially in the super late model and late model stock divisions. The Cars Tour would have sent him right to the back. He would not have won that race. Even on iRacing, you're at least getting an 8X and probably getting protested and probably getting suspended for doing something as dumb as what Austin Dillon did. The old Daryl Walter of Larry Mack, have you ever? No, I've never. No, I've never seen somebody wreck intentionally two leaders in the same set of corners on the last lap and then go on to win the race. And it's unfortunate because Austin Dillon had a really strong car before all of that happened. He had the race one on speed. Like he was the fastest car on track at the end of the race right there. But then of course you have Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Forgetting that he was on an oval and that there was a corner coming up, locks it up, gets into turn one too hot at the same time. Ryan Priest just assumed that he was the only car on the racetrack once again because I just assumed that he wasn't racing anybody all night. Turns in the two of those, those two guys run into each other, which is just apropos for the both of them in their entire season so far this year. They bring out the caution. Austin Dillon then pits, gets back out in front, takes the inside line. Joe Logano takes the outside line on the restart. Logano passes him on the outside out of turn two. And you're like, okay, Logano's going to win this race. Now pick up his second win of the year. And then Austin Dillon decided to snap his 66 or 68 race winless streak, get out on the front stretch, have his kids there. Smart move. Actually, big brain move by Austin Dillon and the team to send his wife and kids out onto the front stretch, maybe even a nanny, too, because that ensured that Joey Logano wasn't going to go out there and try to beat his ass because Logano was fuming pissed after the race. He was standing next to his car. He called it chicken shit. He did a burnout in front of the number three crew guys on pit road. Not the safest thing in the world, but it's, you know, I get his displeasure out of it. You also had Denny Hamlin say that, it, you know, blew his shoulder out the way that Austin Dillon turned him into the wall. I'm not sure if that meant it popped his shoulder out or what there. Hopefully he's fine for Michigan. Then you had Bubba Wallace and Tyler Reddick both call, um, ha um, both call Dillon's move chicken shit, which it absolutely was. And I have a feeling a lot of guys in the field 
felt the same way. And, you know, a lot of people are going to point to the point system as the reason for why Austin Dillon did what he did, because a win locks you in. Austin Dillon now goes from 32nd in points, the third worst driver amongst full-time drivers this year. The only driver's worse than him is Zane Smith in a rookie year. And Harrison Burton, who forgets that he's a cup driver most weekends, those two were worse than him. He's now locked into the playoffs. NASCAR probably wishes they had that top 30 rule back. Remember when we were talking about if Corey LaJoy wins at Atlanta, was it last year or the year before? And that locks him into the playoffs, but he's going to have to get into the top 30 in points. Well, Austin Dillon doesn't even have to worry about that now. He's now locked into the po- into the championship. Well, not the championship, but the playoffs. And that puts Bubba Wallace back onto the bubble at plus three now. And he's probably the biggest loser out of all of this tonight. But for Austin, it just, you know, all five of his NASCAR Cup Series wins, and I can remember all five of them, have all had something weird about them. His Coke 600 win, uh, when he scored that, he won it on fuel mileage. Hey, good for him. He was the first person to make it to the line. He saved fuel better than anybody else that night. The uh, 2018 Daytona 500 win. He drove through Eric Almarola on the backstretch like he was trying to make an NFL roster and just absolutely junked him. And then you go on to Texas. He wins that race because the NA18D package was just so bad you couldn't pass him. The team understood if we get him out front, nobody's going to be able to pass him. And that's exactly what they did. They ran 1-2 that day with he and Tyler Reddick. And then you have his win at the Summer Daytona race in 2022 when the entire field wrecked out. He was the only car that really still had a full car intact, and he still struggled to win that race. And now on Sunday night at Richmond, you have his win, uh, which is definitely shrouded in controversy. Should he be suspended is probably the biggest question. I would argue that, yeah, I think you probably should, because I do think that NASCAR should have some sort of driving standard at this point. You cannot do that. You can move him. Do what he did to Logano, fine. You can make that argument. To wreck both leaders in the final set of corners, that's just absolutely ridiculous to me. And it looks bad overall as a sport. I get it. A lot of people are going to like it. I get it. It's probably an unpopular opinion that I have. But at some point, you have to kind of draw a line and be like, you can't do that. You can't wreck two leaders in the same corner. You can wreck one. Two is just taking a little bit too far. Today's video is sponsored by Driven Sunglasses. Head over to drivensunglasses.com. Use code BREAKHARD for 20% off plus free shipping. I'm so excited about it. I'm headed over to drivensunglasses.com right now to check it out. BREAKHARD code at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. And it's unfortunate because the race is actually really good. The tire strategy, having two different tire compounds, the option in the primary was fascinating all night. Yeah, Daniel Suarez, he put on the option tire, flew to the front. I mean, you were like, damn, is he driving a Joe Gibbs racing car again? No, he wasn't. He was driving a track house car, which has been, you know, uh, dog food all season for the most part and ends up getting there, getting the stage two victory. Looks pretty good. He then puts on the primary tire and absolutely sank like the Ocean's Gate Titanic submarine just boom right to the ground you're like well that didn't exactly work out too well then you have kyle bush driving around people say oh don't run with scissors he said all right fine i won't run with scissors i'll just drive a race car while trying to cut my wrist guard off in the car he did it perfectly fine didn't even nick himself one bit shout out to him that's pretty impressive motor skills to be able to do that and not wreck your car overall really solid race. Chris Rebell at the start, he ran through Eric Jones like he was also trying out for an NFL roster. And if I was going to pick one of the two who I was go- would pick, I'd probably pick Austin Dillon. I feel like he's probably a bit stockier and would be a better football player than Chris Rebell. But I don't know, because then you have to work in the fact that he was like a Nepo baby. Chris Rebell wasn't a Nepo baby. Chris Rebell probably was going to work a little bit harder than Austin Dillon. And it's a real toss up right there for me. Overall, I probably would have given this race an 85 maybe even before or before the the finish now with that finish leaving such a bad taste in my mouth i probably knock it down to like a 60 that was a massively disappointing end to the race and i hate that it ended that way because it shouldn't have it should have gone to it should have ended the way that we are all hoping it would where austin dillon ends up winning the race ricky stenhouse jr isn't a factor but just wanted people to remember that he was out there. Hey, I got Kroger on my car. Fascinating. We don't care anymore. But hey, Austin Dillon wins at his fourth best track uh, statistically. 16.7 average finish for him there. It's not impressive, but it's a stat. So we're going to go ahead and throw it out there for the people. But Austin Dillon probably should not have done things the way he did. He's locked into the playoffs, and that's all that matters, especially if he doesn't get a penalty out of it. But If NASCAR does issue a penalty, they're not going to take the race win away from him. But are they going to find him points? Doesn't matter. He's locked into the playoffs unless you're going to take away his five points for for making the postseason. And then that 
does that nullify his victory? If you find him a monetary fine, that's fine. Pop Pop's going to cover cover that. But overall, I'm just not super happy with the way that race ended. But let me know in the comments because I'm sure this is going to be a polarizing topic without a doubt. So like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Breakhard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Breakhard Blog.